curtain's gone upstairs, so I am not going to be attacked during this video. <laughs> well, this is art dust. <laughs> and uh, I'm Glenda Gibson. And I'm Donna and, Druin. <laughs> and uh, in our last podcast, uh, Lectio Divina came up. And uh, so Donna leads that really well. So she's going to tell you a bit about that. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, Lecto Divina. It, I use it all the time and I do it without thinking about it now. Um, I was introduced to, to it um, as a process by Andy Bromley at uh, Worship Academy way, way, way back in 2010. I think that's right. Way back then, 2010. It's so long ago. Um but yeah, he talked about Lecto Divina and something stuck and we he led us through the process. And so I, being a diligent student, took all my notes down and um, I've been kind of using it ever since. And I do it without thinking. So it's a four stage process. Um, I've changed the end slightly. I've adapted it. So I have a visual response rather than a written or a shared response. But you basically, as a collectively as a group you would read it first together out loud but obviously I'm at home on my own so I just read it out loud to myself and then then after that you um go back and you read it quietly in your head kind of just very quietly you read it and then what you do is you sit there and you realize as you go through there is something that just comes alive is just a louder word amongst all the other words and or a phrase or a line or it might be two or three it might just be a color but those things are the things that are, will just resonate with you they'll just speak to you and so you just take a note of them and then so you just write them down to one side finish the bit you're reading and then you go back and you look at those things and then you come out and you go you just spend time with them and I'm trying to work out what it is that speaks to you. Sometimes I go off and do research. I go off and look it up or I go, there was a line about being more precious than a fear. And I didn't know, like, so there's lots of theories about what a fear is. And I wanted, it. And so I was curious about what that, what that meant and why, why was that line speaking to me more? Um, and then I sat down and drew my response. Um, but I've been doing this with the book of Joshua in the Bible recently. And um, it came up in the log past podcast because I was talking about the fact that I'd never noticed women being given equal rights as men before in the Old Testament. And I just and that really spoke to me about because Jesus treats women equally. And he has. Um, yeah. And I just found that really, really fascinating. So that's my. But when I've done it in the past, I've done it as a collective, as a group and a in um, Leicester Cathedral and I took a group of people around an exhibition and I adapted it to an exhibition and I showed them so, um, so you what you do is you go around the exhibition and then so you just go around the exhibition together as a group and then go around the exhibition on your own and then go back to the paintings that mean something to you or something it, you know, it could be that it literally is a shape or a line it could be the title, it could be the piece of art itself. Um, and then then go back and, and and from that take your own and make your own piece of work. And that's I've it's kind of called Visio Divina when you create something um that's a visual response. But yeah, that's Lectio Divina. That's how I use it. Um Donna uh, the the four stages so just let me get this right the first one is if you're in a group you just group read it and you read it quite slowly don't you yeah you, you have read to it when you're reading in a group yeah because if obviously everyone not everyone in the in a group will actually have the same translation of of the bible they all have their own and they're you know so the rhythm yeah. sometimes you kind of just have to pause to allow the rhythm of the group to catch up or because their words you know they will have longer or shorter words and yeah, so you do yeah. that first. You do the the long read together first, and then you sit and you read it on your own, and then then you kind of and you know you, you kind of you're now looking. So the first time it's almost like you're 
you're just glancing at something the next time your gaze settles on it and then the next time you you kind of really concentrate and then you you make a response there's some sort a response. of response, isn't there's it? Some response and, yeah and in your case it's uh usually a visual yeah a visual it's usually response a visual. Yeah. yeah i mean i i do a similar thing and have been doing it before i knew what i was doing yeah um and i make written responses I have made written responses, but yes, so this is a way of doing visual response. Um, and, and part of the reason we're sharing this with uh, Christian artists is this is so easy for you to do with your group. Just read the Bible verse in this slow, meditative way and then get people to respond. And we've done that too, haven't we? In uh, certain yeah. areas, we've sat there and um, gone through. We did Psalm 104 and yeah. we had people responding to it. And it's just amazing how different people's responses are, weren't they? We had yeah. somebody who was really feeling the um, Ukrainian, uh, the, the hearts of the Ukrainians yeah. uh, and the birds in that particular psalm spoke yeah. to her. And, um, yeah, just yeah, different we, things. Yeah, we did it down in Hereford, didn't we, as well? We did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that was really interesting because you don't know when you walk into these groups and, and you um, – you you present the, the the thing you're doing, and then you never know how people are going to you know yeah some people were really found it really hard to actually sit and do because they, they it really spoke to them very deeply and they they struggled to produce a response, but mm. yeah yeah you, you don't have to share <laughs> no you don't have to share but but it blesses if you're able to it blesses yeah. other people if you share yeah. doesn't it. Yeah. Because you go, oh wow, that's that's amazing, you know. When people people see it, I mean, there's a yeah. So um, we're not going to do lectio divina. No, <laughs> or no, I think, divina. I thought but, I thought about doing one, but I thought no, actually, we won't. No. But but um, so I'm I'm going to talk about a painting. Um, I've got a I've got a cup of tea. Um, in my hand and I drink tea constantly it's in a beautiful porcelain mug and it's actually Donna gave it to me <laughs> she got it from somewhere but what's significant about it is it's got a dragonfly on it and actually this little image of it it's a watercolor painting I think of a dragonfly um, and it did actually help me with my dragonfly um, if you're watching this on YouTube it's a yellow painting behind me it's a painting of a dragonfly but it's I'll explain it a bit. It's it's called Glory Flight, and it does have a massive. It's it's over a meter long, and it's got a huge dragonfly on it. Now, where this image came from is I was struggling with another large painting. I couldn't work out how to resolve it and make it look right. People kept saying, "Oh, it needs cows in the field." I'm like, ah, no, that's not what I want to do. Um, and as I woke up from a nap, and artists should nap. They really should because there's something about coming out of a nap um, that releases something within you. And this has happened to me more than once that I've woken up from a nap and I know what to do. And I just got this feeling that I should paint a dragonfly um, on this canvas. I didn't paint it on that canvas. I chose a different canvas and I resolved the painting in a different, the other painting in a different way and it's now sold. Um, but, but with this, with, I chose this painting to do a dragonfly on. And I was out going for a walk in my village and on one of the buildings, and it was actually a building that had an art gallery in it, a little art gallery for a little while. Um, this lady had a gallery there. And a dragonfly was on the gallery wall and it just stayed there for ages. And I've never seen, I've seen damsonflies, but not dragonflies in the, the village before. And it stayed there for ages and I took loads of photographs and got up really close and um, I was able to uh, uh, increase the photographs so that I could see all the little veins in the wings. <laughs> uh, Donna, has, Donna has her son home at the moment if you look at this on YouTube. <laughs> He's just popped in the background. We have lives. We're real people. We have <laughs> <laughs> anyway um the uh 
So I was able to draw this. So it took me a long time to do it because I, I, I don't love drawing. I love splashing paint about, but drawing is not the thing that I love to do. Um, and I, the wings of a dragonfly are clear. So I knew I had to paint something in the background that would work to see through the wings. I thought, what will I draw behind this dragonfly? Now, in the meantime, like Donna said, I got curious about a dragonfly and what what it meant spiritually and in different cultures and things. And across all cultures, it, it means uh, a new beginning, a, a, a creative uh, end, and um, it's a very powerful spiritual thing. And as I was looking at all of these um, things that people were writing about it, God said to me, I save the best till last. And you'll know from the scripture that that, that comes from the wedding at Cana where the wine that Jesus had turned water into wine, that the wine was the best. And Jesus said to me, I save the best till last because I had been worried about being older, worrying about my health, worrying about, you know, what... How, how much energy and time I'd have left um, in my life. What could I possibly do with my life now that I'm older? I, I am actually only 63. <laughs> There's people a lot older than me that do a lot more than I do. Uh, but the Lord told me that he saves the best to last. And I thought, well, the end of my life is going to be good. Um, and, and and that was great. So when I went to do this painting, I decided to paint glory underneath the painting. So painting glory, it's uh, for me, yellow is a God colour. Gold is, I relate gold to God, God. So I put some gold leaf on. I've got lots of my shapes because I've, as I've developed as an artist, I've recognised that I do certain sorts of shapes so I put a lot of those in the painting as well in oranges and um, mostly oranges and yellows a lot of those shapes and some long stripy shapes that represent the lightning because there's lightning around the throne of God um, and the other thing that's around the throne of God is a rainbow an emerald rainbow that doesn't make sense but that's what it says so there's a rainbow in the painting as well but little tiny dots um, the dots form the rainbow going going up the painting. So that colour is in the picture as well. It's not obvious, but it is in there. So, yeah, and then I had to draw on all those little tiny veins <laughs> that are in the wings of the dragonfly. And and finally, and finally I finished it. it um, so, and it's blessed people and people like it. Um, it's not sold yet, but people have been interested in it and quite moved by it. Um, but I know that the right person at the right time will, will own this dragonfly and it's still blessing me. And in fact, it blessed me today because again, I was feeling old. <laughs> Can I drive all the way to Cornwall um, and do a... Uh, a weekend retreat and then drive all the way back but um, God has told me he's saved the best to last and I will have all the health and energy I need to do the things that he's called me to do and I think perhaps he is calling me to be involved in this prophetic art weekend in Cornwall so I thought I'd share that with you it it, it shows um, how God is in the whole process in this case, from the beginning to the end. And he will still be in the process when this painting sold, speaking through the painting to somebody else. And, you know, we're just, we're like musicians. We just mm. play our instrument. We just do our tools and God does the rest. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you are. There you are. <laughs> I won't be talking about paintings all the time, but I just thought I would on this occasion. No, yeah. it's in, it's important. Sometimes paintings have their own testimony. Like there is a reason behind, you, you know, there is a, a, a very in-depth reason as to why this painting exists. Yeah. 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 yeah I had a similar occurrence with a painting I did with, um, I, was, I got caught out in a snowstorm. And I walked down the back track to where 
I was going to go to the bridge to go and look at the snow falling on the river and the um, all the dead flowers had have been refilled with all the blossom heads have been refilled with snow and that painting it just really spoke to me about the fact that at the end there's so much more like after when everybody else sees something dead they just think oh that's it it's finished but actually it's still got purpose it still has masses of purpose so yeah i get that <laughs> yeah nothing nothing is wasted with god at all no uh so oh the other thing of so we'll, we'll we'll finish up now and just tell you some of the stuff we've been doing um we do do a newsletter so try and connect with us some way and we'll put you on our mailing list if you want to know more about the other stuff we do besides a podcast and when a podcast is coming up we'll put that in there um and and the other thing you might like to do is contact us and you can contact us through Facebook, This Beautiful Dust, or Donna, Gib Donna Gibson, Donna <laughs> Druin or Glenda Gibson. <laughs> it's me being dyslexic. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. There you are. You know that now. Um, or I think if this is on YouTube, you can leave a comment, but I don't know how I get the comments. We, we, we're really just... new to this, so we're still learning how to do everything. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is if you've got something that you would like us to talk about, then get in touch and we'll have a go at talking about it if we know about it because we don't know everything. No, we don't. But, yeah, but we've been doing this for a while now and um, and we've experimented with lots of things just like we're experimenting with this <laughs> and we've learned stuff. So um, we're happy to pass that information on and just generally be encouraging uh, mm. to Christian artists so um, just a, rem a reminder if you get this before the 11th 12th and 13th of August or the 5th of yeah 23 that that there is a lovely retreat that we're doing we've been doing it since about 2010 actually 11 yeah and uh, we go every year to our lovely friend Rosie Palmira's house. It's a barn conversion on the River Hull. She has a kayak she can take out on the river if you game or swim uh, or fish. Um, yeah. Walks, beautiful country walks around there. Uh, her house is jam-packed with the most extraordinary bits of art. It's just yeah. amazing. Oh, including yeah. one of mine <laughs> and a couple of yeah. donors. <laughs> You should. I should also say you can stay at the house. That the house has plenty of rooms. It's it's it, it's there is accommodation of you know there is limited accommodation available, but there is accommodation available on site. So yeah, and there's so, space in the garden for a tent. Yep. Um, some or a camper just, van at the front. <laughs> yeah, camper vans at the front. Or you can just come for a day and stay. Mm. Stay. It's um, close-ish to Beverly. Yeah. um and yeah so it's it's just a lovely relaxing weekend and we do art we think about art but but it's not a ram packed program it's very relaxed very well you know just go with the flow in fact flow is what this one is called we call each retreat a name and this one is called flow so yeah. look out for that um in facebook or wherever you can contact us and find out a bit more about it if you want to go to that. And uh, Donna, you want to tell us a little bit about Kingstock? Yeah, so this year is um, the last Kingstock Music Festival. Um, so it's on the 5th of August. It's in, I want to say Cambridgeshire, but I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, Cam I think it's in Cam I think they, it's in Cambridgeshire. Um, the UK, um, it's... Um, a wonderful music festival we've been involved the last few years helping just from basics and helping to set up to, to break down um but we've also been there running uh, we've had a marquee and we've run um an art side of it so that people could come and had just access some art you know because you know people just come and make things we've done um com like big community pieces of artwork whilst we're there and it's been really lovely and so yeah the family after like 12 years i think it is have decided that it's you know so it's 
it's you know they want to go do other things they want to do some new things so this is their last year this year be great to see you it's going to be fab it's got a really good lineup of bands um yeah but we'll have music um we'll have a link to that on so people can find it and book yeah. and go yeah because so it's great it's king stop with two s's in the middle if you're yes. looking up if you're looking up on a web page or on Facebook, you'll find it that way. But yeah. also through this beautiful dust on Facebook. And I yeah. think that is enough from us. I think it is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next uh, podcast. Yeah, we will. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for watching.